Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? Um, once again, I'm Adrian Navarro. I'm one half of the NB Handyman Chronicles. I'm also the owner of the Humble Handyman that's posted on Facebook. Uh, my brother, he owns the r, &R Recovery Services and the Handyman Services based out of, you know, Fort Bend area. Uh, I'm going to touch a few things on a couple topics here and there. People have been asking me about me. What made me do this? What made me want to get into this? What made me start doing this? And there's several different reasons, and I figured, you know what? This would be a perfect time to touch base on that. I think it started off like in school. I think in school, I got into the automotive. Uh, my automotive teacher was amazing. Like the way he taught his class, the way he addressed us and stuff like that, made me want to learn more about it. So I went and got my ASEs for diesel and gasoline automotive. So that's where that comes in. I think my other teacher, uh, little besides my math teacher, Ms. Jackson, if you ever knew Ms. Jackson during our, our age group, oh man, she was amazing. Math teacher, amazing. Uh, but my teacher, I had a teacher that was a computer tech, computer tech course. And that's where my electronic stuff comes in. I just had a passion for it. I think I just... Uh, Something about electronics, something about electrical and stuff like that just caught me and just, it hooked me in, it pulled me in, and I stayed with it. And a lot of you, you're in your business now because of that passion. You have that passion where it's like, man, I want to be this person. I want to do that. I want to, man, I, I, I can do that. So why not? So that's what caught me. And I think growing up, throughout the time, you know, growing up the youngest of five kids, stuff like that, um, Beautiful mom, uh, amazing person. She was always that person too, never gave up. She never stopped, never made excuses. Uh, I love her to death for that. It, when I got to the age where it was time for me to go to work and stuff like that, I started working with my brother. Well, working for the same company my brother worked for. Uh, I worked with my cousin and a good friend of mine. My brother and him, he worked with his another cousin of ours with a different group of people, but we also worked for the same person, uh, Mr. Joe Lopez. Uh, I love him to death. I would always love him to death for the opportunity he gave us. Uh, we used to call him Uncle Joe. We used to build custom stairs. We used to do those wooden staircases that looked like they were floating. So my passion to woodworking came from that. Like, man, you can do a lot with wood. I mean, it's crazy material. You can cut it how you want it, bend it, mold it, you know, build what you want. So me building decks and everything that's in my head, like, it's a passion. Like, man, you know, we used to do this. We used to build three-story staircases that went from the first floor to the second floor, second floor to the third floor. It looked like they were just floating, nothing underneath them. So we did a lot of our work in Sienna Plantation, Sienna Point, Marinatha. So one of your houses, if you're watching the video, we might have built your stairs. We might have did the punch-out work in there. We might have built your secondary stairs, your backup case stairs, uh, things like that. Uh, I think also... Just the just the fact that being young and having these people come in and work on your work on your appliances or working on uh, a plumbing issues or stuff like that and seeing what they made and always telling yourself, I could do that, I could be that person, but for a better price, give back to the people. That that was me. I do have a full time job. Uh, I worked for the past five years. Five and a half years I've been working for the state. Uh, February would be six years. Okay, I took some time off due to family issues and stuff. But I've been with them for six years. I've been blessed, blessed to work for the state. Uh, everybody has a different opinions about it. When I first started off, I started off as a CO, a correctional officer. And I started off at the Garza West Prison. I want to give a big shout out to the Garza West, the 1-8 shift. I was blessed to be a part of that crew I learned a lot. These are veterans that have been in the system 20 years, have retired and came back, and they still do what they do. You know, they walk into those gates every day, you know, to handle up, you know, to take care of issues and stuff like that. You know, no one ever really uh, touched base on that. Uh, with the 1A shift, the way it worked is, you're talking about you had to pick the boss, you had a rover. You were in charge of controlling 216 inmates. Uh, if it's at chow time, 300 plus sometimes. You never know. If it's short, we always have those members that always called in or someone that never showed up. You always have to cover those shifts and things like that. Stay late. You know, it happens. Uh, I was blessed to be a part of that. I learned a lot of responsibility. I learned a lot of 
teamwork ethic into them, and I'm always thankful for them. Uh, I'm always thankful for my W Building crew. Uh, you know who you are. Uh, we, we, we became a family, and you know, got into that. Well, about a good year and some some months after, they found out that I knew maintenance work, and of course, they threw me into the maintenance department, and that's where I became the electrician, the electrician supervisor. Uh, I was in charge of all the electrical uh, backup generators. These backup generators, this is where my automotive came in. These are 700 K-Dub diesel coming generators. So these are big generators with 1,800 gallon, 1,300 gallon fuel tanks on the bottom of them. This is where if, the, if, if power was lost, the generators will kick on within a second, two seconds to give, uh, to restore power back, emergency power. So we were dealing with uh, 600, 300 amp, 600 amp, 200 amp, 100 amp transfer switches. Uh, I was in charge of those. I would install them, replace them, rebuild them, work on the generators. If I had to swap them out with backup generators, then of course I would do that. I was fortunate to be given a position in the maintenance department full time. And that's where my passion really just kicked off. From the maintenance department, I, I was uh, given the opportunity to join the regional maintenance department, which means... I would travel to different prisons. I think with the Region 4 maintenance, I was, you know, part of 17 prisons. But within this six years, I was able to assist 32 to 34 different prisons. I think I've, I've assisted. And what I mean assist is I would go to those prisons to assist them with issues that they couldn't resolve themselves. So I was always that person that would think outside the box, like, yes, you know what? Let me go show them what we did over here. And it helped them. We're going to teach them. I'm going to learn from them. They're going to learn from me. And being at 30-something-plus prisons, even including private facilities, it taught me a lot. Uh, I even oversaw the remodel work of the Briscoe when we, we changed it over to the detainees, which was for the, the illegals and all that stuff was going on. I went in there. I was there, you know. 17, 18 hours a day, working, working, working. And of course, we were part of the response team during the whole ice storms and stuff like that. So I'm not a stranger to work. Everybody's like, man, you're always dressed up. You always got your hat and your shirt on. Hey, I will go to your wedding, your quinceanera, and I'll go dig a ditch like this if I have to with you. I got your back. This is what we do. Me and him, uh, my brother, who I'm referring to, we don't just, we're not just the guys you talk to on the phone. We're the guys that are going to be a part of your project the whole step of the way. So you deal with us, you end it with us, you're always interacting with us. And I've learned that with the whole prison concept. You know, I've met everybody that I had to meet and I knew that I had to be there. I had to be on point. I had to be presentable. I had to be respectful. And I learned a lot of that. And of course, I learned a lot of respect due to the fact that I'm the youngest of five kids, three older sisters, an older brother. So I'm, I'm, always, I'm always learning something. You know what I mean? Yes, I want to challenge them. I want to, uh, but, you know, at the same time, too, you got to be respectful about it. So getting more back to me and myself, uh, it's just a passion. Uh, when I was working for the, I used to work for National Tire and Battery. I used to do contract work for them. I traveled. I went to different NTBs, training sales associates, training the tire technicians, training technicians. When I first started with them, I was a tire technician. So I know what it's like. If I got to mop floor, sweep, do all that to get to where I need to be, it's 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 part of life. You know, when you go to Walmart, you're not always the first one in line. You know, sometimes you just got to wait and wait your turn. So we did that, and that's how I learned. So being part of the TDCJ maintenance, uh, which is the Texas, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, I've learned a lot. I learned a lot from people. I learned a lot what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say, how to be, how not to be. So when we use the word humble, that's one of those main things we talk about. We're just two people, you know? We grew up the same way you grew up, the same opportunities you had. And we just decided we're gonna follow our passion. We work for companies. I've worked for companies where I've done construction work and they've made bukus of money, but that's not what it's about. You know, it's about how can these people, how can our customers afford what we do? How can they do that? Why not start our own business? We don't have this big capital, this big overhead. 
So why not start our own business where we can be affordable, but give you quality work? You know, we're very picky on what we do. If I don't like it, I'm the first one to rip it down. When it comes to fences, when it comes to uh, removing walls, when it comes to adding walls, when it comes to building you a custom patio, deck, covered, electrical, ceiling fans, everything. If, if I'm not within my guidelines of a certain measurement, I don't like it. If I cannot sit there and be like, I will sit here and relax on this deck, I'm not going to leave it for you to have. So that's where that passion comes in. It comes into, if I wouldn't like it, why would I want you to like it? If I wouldn't accept it, why would I want you to accept it? So that's my mindset on why I do what I do. Uh, I love to build. I love to build. I'm good with numbers, something about measurements and things like that, designs. My brother gets mad because I don't really give him the full scope of what we're going to do until we get there. He's like, what are we doing? We're going to do this, 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 and this. Okay, then what? Well, let's just get past. Let, let's let's get this done first because wood, you can cut it all you want. You can't make it real once you cut it. So let's get past this point and let's see where we end up. And we'll go from there. I might tweak a few things here and there, but don't worry. You're going to get the product you want the way you wanted it. I just want to make sure that it's done right. My name is the most important thing. I don't want you to be like, oh, it's when you when you say who did this, I want to be like, you know, Adrian Navarro, Oscar Navarro, you know, the, the Navarro brothers, they came and they took care of this. I want them to be like, they did this because that says everything, whether it's light or not light. So we're not going to throw our name onto something that we wouldn't be comfortable with ourselves. So we've been, we've always stood by that. We've always stood by that. Like, what do you think? You know? There's been jobs that the money would have been great, but it's not about the money. It's about the job. If we can't do it right the first time, if we can't do it right where it's actually quality work and it's going to last, we won't be a part of it. I'm sorry. No disrespect. Not to offend anybody. But we do it our way because it's going to be done right. If we have to go back and do something twice, then we're losing. Because we're not going to leave you with a product that's not right. So... When we sit there and tell you our prices are what our prices are, it's because we're going to give you the quality you want. We're going to give you that lasting forever. We're going to give you that, hey, we want to retire and we want this deck or this patio to be this and that. We're going to give it to you. We're going to give you exactly what you want, the quality of work you want, the way you want it. This is what it's going to cost. You know, you might be like, wow, that's, that's cheap. It's a blessing. We're being blessed with the opportunity to be a part of your family and your home building this for you, you know, we're going to create a relationship with you. We're going to be there for you. We're always going to be those people that always go back and check on you. We're going to follow up with you. Hey, how's everything going? Oh, everything's great. Or, you know what? Something feels like it's loose. No problem. We're going to be there. We're going to go back and check on it. My brother always makes sure he follows up with customers and things like that. If there's little things going on, you know, we, we both play a role and I'm down. Hey, we need to go over here. So-and-so said, this board's not screwed down. I'm on the way. Get ready. Take everything. With it. Take all. And we're going to take every tool we got. Well, why are we just screwing it? Just in case. Take all the drills. Take all the screws. Take a skill saw. You never know. Take some extra boards in case we got to put some, you know, some bracings and things like that. So we'll always be that company that does that. So that's why we wanted you to know. Uh, like I said, a bunch of questions were asked uh, to me, like why I got into it. I'm pretty sure he got asked the same questions, and I'll let him explain his side of it and why he does what he does. But once again, the Humble Handyman Services, we're on Facebook. Don't forget to look us up. And same thing, we're also on YouTube at, at NB Handyman Chronicles. So follow with us, subscribe, stay in touch, ask us questions, or share with us your thoughts, your opinions on what could be done, what should be done, or the way you've done things. You never know. I mean, we're always up for information and things like that. Or we're always down to answer questions. You know, uh, what our local restaurants are, where, you know, what food we like, typical things like that. A lot of those questions were asked to me. And, of course, I'll address those in messages later, uh, where we go eat and things like that. And I know, you know, you saw our koozies and stuff like that. And I think on his koozie, he actually had Joy's Oyster Bar. 
uh, real good friends of my brother. Good crawfish, man. We just went over there recently to go eat. Yes, the crawfish are a little, little right now, but his flavor is on point, and that's all I care about is the flavor. Because I know as he progresses throughout the season, things will be good. So y'all go check them out, George Oshkabar. I wish I had the koozie and the address so I could actually tell you specifically where it's at. But we'll have the link in the bio. So don't forget to look us up and subscribe. Once again, NB Handyman Chronicles. Check us out and follow us, and don't forget to share.